The Chamber of Commerce hosted the annual State of Our Town presentation. Town Manager Norman Kamalu gave an update. In terms of Hopkinton's outlook, it is stable, it is positive. And here's why. First off, I'm not the only one saying this. We recently received the report, and Kathy may be speaking to this, I don't want to steal your thunder. Recently received the report that our high school was the best, third best in this state. Um, and over the years, we've also been recognized for having our high school being nationally ranked. Um, secondly, we also recently uh, received recognition for being the fifth safest town uh, in Massachusetts. I can tell you when we last did our citizen satisfaction survey, uh, we asked people to identify two drivers behind everything that they liked about Hopkinton. One of those things was that they felt safe in this community. On behalf of the Board of Selectmen, Chairman John Catino spoke. As I speak before all of you today, reflecting on our past efforts and looking forward to our future endeavors, I'm first very pleased to be able to say in the past year was remarkable success for this town. And second, we believe that with continued balance, this upcoming year should be another one of uh, improvement and prosperity. In the public sector, we will open a new library, a new DPW facility, and in 2018, a new elementary school. We, we already opened the North Road to relieve the downtown traffic. We uh, formed a center, center school reuse committee and we're currently in the planning stages for building the dog park. The town also witnessed unprecedented uh, second underride in three years. There's also a proposal to lower the water and sewer rates for the first time in many years. It's also important to note that all the properties at Legacy Farms are bringing in significantly more revenue than ever predicted. We do, however, have concerns with the empty storefronts and vacancies downtown and the many properties still to be leased on South Street. School Superintendent Dr. Kathy McLeod gave an update. Um, achieve. So, well, I, I think you are aware of the high school achievement. That this, and you know that the high school administrative team would be the first to say um, that that those successes are due to the successes that happened beginning at the very lowest, or at the very beginning grade. I won't say lowest um, for our very youngest learners. And so the Elmwood School had their best MCAS performance in the past four years. And for those of you who are listening, those of you who are in the audience who may wonder why I'm beginning with the cent uh, Elmwood School, it's because that's the first year where we actually test using MCAS. So when we say uh, we, we don't test kids before third grade. Um, however, once again, the results that we see in third grade, that, that's really a culmination, of course, of what's been happening for our kiddos ever since kindergarten. Um, preschool really, but we don't get to educate all of our preschoolers, so we only take responsibility for what happens as far as it relates to MCAS beginning in kindergarten. The middle school had an incredible achievement in, in narrowing the uh, achievement gap and reaching level one proficiency. It's a very <coughs> difficult step. It's much easier to be at level two. To bridge the gap between level two and level one, and in this case, at our middle school, it was particularly around um, our high need students, it takes a tremendous amount of focused effort um, and we were really delighted to, to see that result because it's something we've been working on for the past four years as well. And then at the high school, you know, we know the ranking, and I think you've heard from my, from my discussion up to this point uh, why we're so excited about it. We're not excited alone about the fact that it's third. Um, we are third in the state, but more excited because of all of the things that we are supported by this community to be able to do to, to enjoy and achieve that kind of ranking.